Okay, Terry. First of all, everyone wants to know how are things today with your son, Danny? Well, thanks. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. I, pr- I appreciate it. Uh, you're, you're taking us home here. You're the last interview of the day. I, I got to fly to Milan. I got to. I got to. I w- just flew back in from Milan yesterday. I got to take a plane out tonight back to Milan. So, um, <clears throat> this is cool. Um, he's doing fine. Uh, he is uh, progressing really well. Uh, it's been about a month and a half now that he's got the new heart, and it's pumping like a champ. All his numbers are. Uh, are really good. Blood work is good. Um, obviously, the, in the first three months is critical because his, his immune system has been squashed. But it starts coming back and looking at the heart in a, in a foreign way. So there's rejection issues we got to worry about over, pretty much for the first three months, and then this, the next six months are, are pretty important. And then after a year, the drug protocol that he's on should be stabled out, and uh, you know, move on with the rest of his life. And where we're, we're so thankful and, and blessed that that that's the case. Um, between the Jeff Probe Survivor Team and the, and the Boston Children's Hospital, um, those guys have worked miracles every day, and we're thankful to have our son. And thank you for asking. Yeah, and I'm curious to know at what point did you learn why he was in the hospital? Were you told kind of off camera, like right away, or did you? you you're right, and, and that, that's a good question. Obviously, there's HIPAA rules and things like that, and uh, you know Jeff could only say so much uh, on camera, and uh, even so, I, I think you realize that the, you know when you heard it from uh, Cass and Sierra and Savage that you know family is everything. They back us up to go on these shows and stuff like that, but. You know, when when one family member or whatever a loved one is is injured or hurt, it, you know, it, it's game over, and and you need to get back home and and help your own folks and everything. So, as soon as we got back on the boat after I gave the tribe a hug and all that, um, Jeff basically handed me his phone because he, he didn't have a lot of detail either, and I was mm-hmm. able to talk to Trish and actually FaceTime uh, with Danny and Trish and my daughter Kayla, and it was a very halting service. So we got on another boat, and we made it back to base camp. And from there, I just talked to him on the phone. And uh, Trish told me it was dilated cardiomyopathy. But um, based in, in layman's terms, it's it's like one of those enlarged hearts athletes get, fall down on the field and never get up. And my son, my daughter, or my wife, luckily got Danny off the lacrosse field where he was playing. And, um, and then – you know, as these symptoms are just crashing down on him, and they all started about two days after I left, and was, his, his internal systems just started shutting down. She got him off the field, got him checked out, and basically on the third check was an echocardiogram, and um, basically the doctor said, Mrs. Dietz, you're not going on vacation. In fact, I just dialed 911, and there's an ambulance coming to take your son to the ER, and then she gets your sirens in the background. And they were just stunned because they were just a whole eaten lunch at Panera. And uh, he got rushed to the hospital, and then they rushed him from Hartford to Boston Children's, where he ended up spending about 79 days and a couple heart procedures and two open heart surgeries, and the last one was a heart transplant. So we are lucky to have our son home, and, uh, you know, I am more than blessed to give him a second chance. You know what I mean? How ironic is that, right? Well, you know, the whole survivor community is, is rooting for you guys and praying for you guys. Well, thank you. It, it, and it is. It, it is a survivor community. And I heard from all around the world, from from all the people that have played Survivor and everything else, and everybody from the cast and, and, and Jeff's team, uh, Anne O'Grady from CBS, uh, Lynn Spillman, just, just everybody, Dr. Eliza. Jeff put together that, that trip back and got me off the beach back to my family. It was It was just wonderful. Mm-hmm. It, it's been was it? that in itself is a super compelling story. Yeah, and the moment where you know Jeff pulled all of the the tribes together at the reward challenge and tells them what happened, and they were all on your side supporting your decision. What was it like watching that on TV last night? Oh my gosh, how how, how great was that? And 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 they've all they've all been in touch. I mean, Jeremy even came and visited me at Boston at Boston Children's when he got home, but. Um, you really saw it with Savage, Cass, and Sierra. They, they've got little kids at home, and uh, you know, it, anytime it, it hits the family, anytime it hits the support group that allows you and makes the sacrifice for you to go out there, it, it starts to get emotional. And um, yeah, it hit them hard, and, and it really was. It was, 
it, it was very nice to see. And like I said, they've all been in touch, and, and the support is it, – I, I can't explain it. It's It's been everything. And going back to last week, uh, how surprised – were you to see that Kelly Wentworth had kind of rallied all the troops at Takeo to vote you out? <laughs> were you, was that something you were aware of, or did you learn by what? Well, you, you know, Marcus, it, it, it's weird now because uh, because of the circumstances. I'm kind of watching the show like I'm not even there, you know, and I'm uh, just watching it as a fan. And uh, obviously she and I were on the bottom, and she was doing a good job. Uh, she immediately got together with Sierra and Cass. And uh, those two were, were three tight. And, and then I thought I was good with Keith and Joe. Obviously, Joe and I talked a lot about, you know, being good at challenges and everything that we needed to watch each other's back because if one of us didn't make it to the merge, then the other one became an open target. Uh, Keith was kind of along for the ride, but I, I was hoping that uh, he would be along with me. And, uh, you know, there were other confessionals where I talked about, you know, Cass and I have that Navy you know, Navy bond and, you know, former Navy and background. So, uh, you know, one day we were a strong six, at least everybody was talking about it. And the, the day kind of that afternoon, I think when I left uh, that night, that afternoon is when I saw that. And, and did you notice that Keith has got my shorts on? I lent him my shorts because <laughs> he, he had jeans, right? And, you know, and he was rolling them up to do challenges. I'm like, Keith, please just take my shorts, run around in my boxers. And uh, so I texted him right after I'm going, Keith, I don't see me in that strong five. I was like, I think I want my shorts back. <laughs> <laughs> so we got we got a good laugh. I, I think Kelly Wentworth's going far. And and even though I've you know I've texted these people, been in touch, uh, I you know I've talked to a bunch of them as well, and uh, and, and I haven't asked because I don't want to know. Uh, and I think she goes far. She's she's working it. She's. She came on the sh- on the show that way. She's strong. She's strong willed, and she's going to get what she wants. So, uh, well, hey, we'll see how it works out for her. Mm-hmm. And you know, one of the strong moves you made this season was when you befriended Abby Maria after her yes. that original vibe turned on her. Is that is that one of your best moves from your perspective? Yeah, I mean, that's the, I think at the time, arguably, that was the biggest uh, you know social move. Uh, of the game, obviously, I was on the bottom. I had I had really nowhere else to go. So, um, and, and just to give you the quick and dirty on that, uh, Jeff uh, Varner and I had talked about. Uh, he suggested talking to her. Um, we were out in the water, and he suggested it, and I'm like, okay, that's uh, yeah. I don't know about that because she and I had just had a run in. It was woo. She and I up at the up at the shelter, and it was funny because I wish this had gotten on TV. I thought, been pretty good at the end of our little thing that we had i was like listen abby let's you and i agree to disagree but let's shake hands because you never know we may end up working together and Mm -hmm. i was like wow you know but anyway that didn't make tv but um so later on that night when when all that went down you know we saw a couple minutes of it on tv but Abby went down to the beach, and then she came back up. And usually all her alliance would sleep on the beach and not in the shelter, but everybody was in the shelter except her. She came back up and basically stood there in front of us all, and it was another 10 minutes of back and forth. And I'm sitting there going, oh, my God, this is real, this is really getting awkward. And um, so she goes back down to the beach. I eventually fall. We all fall asleep. I, I get up a half an hour later to go to the bathroom, and I look down there, and none of her lines is down there, and it's just her, and she's still kind of upset and crying. And I'm like, oh, man. You, you know, this is – we're out in the middle of nowhere in Cambodia. This is this is bullshit. A human shouldn't have to go through this. So I went over there, and no lie, for an hour, we just talked about nothing. You know, we just talked about relationships and consoling and – the stars and life and, hey, Abby, what do you do for a living? You know, that kind of stuff, just to get her mind off of it. And um, and then I was going to go back and go to sleep. And then I walked back down to Abby again. And, and she had mentioned Sarah D- Sandra Diaz Swine and how she thought she was a strong woman and everything. I was like, Abby, are you ready to channel that Sandra Diaz Twine and kick some ass? <laughs> <laughs> Let's kick some ass, you know. And um, And then for the next hour, we talked strategy. And uh, somewhere in there, uh, Jeff Warner came down, and he, he fell asleep like he was sleeping on the beach normally anyway. He came down and went to sleep. And then you saw on TV the next day that, uh, you know, she and 
he and Abby, uh, you know, kind of just finalized the deal, and we made sure we got all the numbers right, split the votes, so that Spencer, if he had an idol, it wouldn't have been an issue. But um, it was a really nice feeling going from the bottom, getting off the bottom, you know, for a day at least, getting off the bottom. And, uh, you know, Shireen is a, a new school strategist. It was a big feather in everybody's cap to, to get her off the show. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and, Terry, I know you have to run a uh, last question here. Would you be open for a third chance season? Because this <clears> one was kind of cut short for you. Uh, you know what? I would, and, and obviously, Marcus, you know that I've got even more issues than, than normal now with, with Danny's health and everything. Uh, mm-hmm. And like I mentioned, i I got to fly to Milan tonight. Somebody's got to fly the airplane uh, around. So, it, it all depends. Timing is everything. Uh, if the timing is right and my son's health is good and stuff, yes, I'd I, I definitely go back if I was asked. Great. And my wife wants to go on an amazing race, so maybe we'll go do that. <laughs> oh, that'd be fun. <laughs> well, we're all thinking of you and thinking of Danny. Um, best of luck to you guys. Well, thanks so much. You have a good afternoon, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.